Hi, I'm Carl Franklin. Have you seen The Blazer Puzzle? It's a new weekly show I've been doing with Jeff Fretz from Microsoft. We give you a little blazer problem to solve. You email us the solution, and we pick a winner every week to win one of these. A blazer puzzle coffee mug. Well, during .NET Conf, Fritzy and I presented a challenge to upgrade this project right here, a .NET 7 blazer server app, to a .NET 8 blazer web app. In episode 14, I showed how to do this, but not really. I showed how to recreate the app as a Blazor web app, but we got a few emails from alert viewers who were expecting me to do what I asked, upgrade the existing app. So that's what I'm going to do right now, right here on Blazor Train. So as promised, I'm starting with puzzle 13. .NET 7 Blazor server project. And, uh, you know, you might think it's as easy as changing this, but the whole architecture of the project has to change because it's going to be a Blazor web app. So I'm going to just hold off on the rest of this until I get some more things going. And the next thing I'm going to get going is to add a new WebAssembly app empty project named Puzzle 13 Client. And I do not want to set it to an ASP.NET Core hosted project. And note that it's also .NET 7. It's okay though, because we're going to change everything. So I'm going to start with this client project and I'm going to change all these packages and add a couple of things up here. So I've added no default launch settings file and static web asset project mode default. I've changed these references down here to Microsoft ASP.NET Core components WebAssembly. I've added the quick grid version eight and also the HTTP extensions because I'm gonna be configuring an HTTP client. Let's go ahead and change the server as well now. Upgrade to .NET 8, adding a reference to the client. We're going to use Web API Core and uh, the ASP.NET Core Components WebAssembly server. So let's take a look at what we're going to do over here on the client. We don't need this properties folder and we don't need the web root, so we'll get rid of those. Just press and delete. I'm going to add a layout folder and up here in the shared folder of the server project, that main layout right there, I'm going to drag that down to the layout folder. And I'm just going to get rid of that whole shared folder. Now I'm going to remove app razor from the client and I'm going to remove the main layout. And under pages in the client, I'm going to rename index to home. Now up in the server, I'm going to remove the models folder. And I'm going to add a components folder. See there. Now what I'm going to do is move pages under components. And I'm going to move underscore imports razor into components. I'm going to rename app razor to routes razor and that's going to move to my WebAssembly project. So I can get rid of this one here. Now I'm going to rename underscore host CSHTML to app.razor and I'm going to move that into the components folder. On the client, I'm going to add a models folder and put my model in there, DTO person. Now, as I was showing this to my wife, she said, why is it called persons manager and persons controller? Maybe it should be called person manager. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna rename it to person manager. And I'm also gonna change person here to DTO person. On the server, I'm going to add a controllers folder. 
and I'm going to add person controller to it. Pretty simple that. On the client, I'm going to add a services folder and add my API service class to that. Good so far. Now I want to rename error CSHTML on the server to error razor, and I want to remove that error CSHTML.cs file. And I'm just going to replace error razor with the default boilerplate stuff from the template. All right, let's start attacking app.razor here. First of all, I'm going to get rid of all this stuff at the top, these four lines. I'm going to change the base from that tilde forward slash to just a forward slash. I'm going to change this component for the head outlet. I'm going to change this line to the routes component. Don't worry, it'll find that later. I'm also going to remove this uh, UI for the error. Now you want to change this uh, JavaScript from Blazor Server to Blazor Web JS. So let's go down to routes in the client. First of all, this not found section is obsolete. So I'm going to change app here to program. And I'm going to add layout dot to main layout so it can find everything. And yeah, now it's happy. And speaking of main layout, let's go there. I'm going to replace that. It's not too much difference. All I really did was got rid of that page title and added the uh, error UI, um, a much stripped down error UI. All right, let's look at uh, configuration, starting with the server in program CS. I'm going to get rid of these things, which add the razor pages and add server side blazer and replace them with a bunch of stuff. So we have services, add razor components, add interactive server components, add interactive WebAssembly components, because yes, we're using render mode auto. Now I'm going to configure the HTTP client with the base address, which for this uh, port, we have to go to properties, launch settings, find HTTPS, get the port number right there. There it is. Down here, I'm going to replace all three of these guys, use routing, map blazer hub, and map fallback to page with this. Use anti-forgery, map controllers, map razor components of app, add interactive server render mode, add interactive web assembly render mode, and add additional assemblies looking at imports on the client so that we can include all the stuff in the client. API service. Got to add that using statement there. And this one here. All right, let's go to imports razor on the server. I'm going to remove this puzzle 13 shared. We don't need that anymore. And we're going to add the following. So the render mode as static, so we don't have to fully qualify that. Uh, system net HTTP JSON, the puzzle client, and the puzzle components. If we go down to imports razor on the client, we're going to remove this guy right here using ASP.NET Core Components WebAssembly HTTP. And we're going to add these ASP.NET Core Components forms, the static render mode, Microsoft ASP.NET Core Components Web Virtualization, System Text JSON, and Client Services. Now I also have to change Program CS on the client. There's a bunch of stuff here. I'm adding the HTTP client with the host environment base address, and then I'm adding that as a scoped service, and then adding API service. Now let's modify home.razor. And we're going to start with the index razor that we have uh, up here in the Blazor server project, or now is just the Blazor web app. And I'll delete that index and then copy and paste it here. But we have a couple of things to add. We're going to inject the API service here. 
And after the page title, I'm going to do something interesting. I'm going to show what platform we're currently operating on, whether it's WASM or server. Going down to the code, going to change person to DTO person. And even up here, context as DTO person. And I'm going to change this load people to use the API. I'm going to add this button disabled Boolean. And we're going to use that in this button right here. I'm also going to delete this text and add another condition here. If the people count as zero, I'm going to say loading. Now on the paginator, I'm going to change value to state because that changed. And this class now is a fully qualified property. Well, let's see if she runs. There you go. Now we'll load all the people. Boom. I give you a Blazor web app with interactive mode auto set globally. Now back to you in the studio, Carl. You know, the Blazor puzzle is a lot of fun and also a good way to learn Blazor and .NET 8 going forward. I do hope you'll check it out at blazerpuzzle.com. Hey, thanks for riding the rails with me today. This is where I jump off. I'll see you next time. Blazer Train!